Right, well that's a stroke of luck. So I've just been out to um, screw fix and to add, let's go and pick some bits and bobs up. And as I was passing by the local vicarage, they were taking down the great big old oak tree. Uh, they're in massive chunks of PCs. Anyway, they said I could take some of the small bits. The trouble with oak, it weighs an absolute ton. It's really heavy. And obviously they were just, um, they've got on them big hydronic cranes that they were lifting out. Um, and around the back of the vicarage, there is a couple of trees down that have been down a while and we have got a contact to the vicarage. So I'm gonna see Sandra to see whether we can see the vicar, if I can run an extension, because obviously um, oak is like the best wood you can get for a burner. But look what I've got. Oh, nice. Right, so this little pile here, we've got plans this weekend, tomorrow. Um, I'm cutting all this up with Sandra. And this little stash here, So that's the, um, basically that's the oak that I've just managed to, um, I've just managed to get, which delights me. So again, we've gone through the log store, so I'm hoping um, by, the, by Sunday, this empty log store here, I'm hoping that's going to be significantly more wood in there, and that's going to be ready for next year, the year after. This stuff is going to see me over, um, over winter this year. Um, but yeah, I couldn't believe it. Um, oak, 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 oak. Uh, so, and you'll be surprised. I know this doesn't look much here. Um, but once that's um, sawn up and split, it'll be, man it'll be manageable. So that's the, that's my template for the size of um, logs that'll fit into the burner. So again, if you, if you measure these, so some of them will need to be chainsawed tomorrow and uh, and split up. So, yeah, fantastic. Happy days. And the stuff, the wood I have got here is all hardwood as well. So that's pretty that's pretty good. Yeah, all right, let's go and do that and then go and put my shopping away. Now. Right, I've got my bits back from Screwfix, which I mentioned I was going to before. So I've um, got my own audience here now. I've been ordering some D-boxes so these are to connect wires to wires sort of thing. Um, I've got a little security light and some extra three core cable. And the reason why I've got this is I, um, I'm going to be putting these up onto the beams in my attic for lighting. So this came about uh because ages ago a, a couple of years ago i bought that and i just stumbled across it the other day and i forgot i got it it was one of them so somewhere was selling it off for about one pound fifty anyway i'm going to cut into a length of wire here now um put one of these um d boxes in in between it and i'm going to daisy chain in um another light and then this will screw up into the uh, into the attic for lighting. Oh, right, well, super bright. Um, so they're all daisy chained in, um, ready to go. I'm not too sure when I'm going to be get back up in the loft. It might be this weekend. I've got a busy weekend, but um, but yeah, that's all ready to go now. All right, time to knock up some tea for tonight and for when Sandy gets home. So tonight I'm going to do a chicken madras. Um, Sometimes madras can be a bit too hot for me, if I'm honest. Um, so this has got three chili, three chilies on it. We'll wait and see. Um, so I'm going to slice up um, a couple of chicken breast fillets. I'm going to do two of those. I'm going to coat it up with a sauce, and I'm actually going to use a wok tonight to actually cook this in. Um, I've got some rice there to go. So let me just cut up some chicken. Right, that's all uh, cut up and diced up. I've just got, oh, look at this, it's security. Security, so you can't shop, lift your chicken. Look at that there, blimey, Charlie. Sign of the times, that, isn't it? Um, I'm gonna put a kettle on, get some boiling water up, and I'm gonna now heat up the wok. Um, woo, there you go. 
Get the wok hot, I'm going to put a teeny bit of oil in, not a lot, just a teeny weeny bit, brown off the chicken, then I'm going to coat it in um, in some of this, uh, this, 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 this powder in the lid, which is really nice. All right, that's going there. I'm just bringing the uh, rice um, some, up to the boil and let that simmer. This chicken for a few more minutes longer. And I'm gonna coat it in the, um, in the spice jar. It's um, like a powder, which is really, really nice. All right, so in the cap here, I don't know if you can see it all. Oh, that smells gorgeous. So that's going to go onto The chicken, coat that now, stir fry that all in. Oh, the aroma coming off this is gorgeous. So fry that in now for a couple of minutes and I'm continually pressing it around. I love cooking with a wok. The best pan in the entire world is a wok, a decent big wok. You can cook anything in a wok. Um, so I've got one here. It's a more of a stainless steel one. Um, so you use that more for frying um, stuff. This one's got a, a, a non-stick coating on it. Right, so give this another minute. And I'm gonna put in the madras sauce. Stay for a couple of minutes and then let it simmer for 15. So that's the sauce in and once that comes up to the boil, I'm going to let that simmer. Um, I would normally at this stage now be frying up poppadoms, um, but I don't know where they've gone. I don't know whether somebody's eaten them all. Um, whilst I was away, but I've normally got several packs of poppadoms. Um, we've got a fantastic Asian shop down the road and um, yeah, I have no idea where my poppadoms are gone. Anyway, not to worry about that. I have got some, I bought the other week, some little bits of naan bread, which I'm gonna lob into the oven um, and warm up. Uh, Righty-ho, let that simmer. Right, so that's a chicken madras with a beautiful rice and some naan bread, all homemade. Look at that. Um, so tuck into that and it's nice and easy for when Sandra gets home tonight. Um, she can just literally warm that up. Um, all freshly cooked. Oh, I've got some liver as well. Um, I don't think I've shown you. Positive I haven't, me cooking my liver and onion. Who doesn't love liver and onion? Oh, it's beautiful. Right, and I've not had too much cheese this week, have I? I need to, hello, Rasha. I need to find something where cheese can, can come onto the menu because, you know, life without cheese, it ain't worth living. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. We've had snow, yes we have. All right, so Sandra's just nipped to the post office and I've got a little bit, a few, few snowflakes coming down as I speak. And we're going to have to get the chainsaw out and be very, very careful where we put the extension. All right, come on, crack on. A lot, a lot to do today. So I've had to be chopper out. Chopper one, chopper two, chopper three, chopper four, chopper five. And if all else fails, I've got a grenade. Chopper six. So the initial first lot of oak I've split. And now I'm just going to fire up the chainsaw and get some of this into more manageable bits, I think. 
Right, you joined us, Sandra. You're back with us. Yeah. It's a bit snowy, isn't it? With a little bit of patience, let me sharpen that. It'll it probably be easier. You'll be, to... you'll be fine. Well, you always say that. We're, we're chainsawing now, anyway. It's fine and better. <sighs> Rubbish. Well, all summer. Today's bet, the day. I bet your little kindling wood went easy because that one was sharp. Rubbish. Progress, Sandra. Progress. Still have fingers, yeah. No problem at all. Good fun, this, isn't it? It's On a beautiful, a sharp chain, so, isn't it? snowy, snowy day. Whizzing through. Anyway, that's uh, so far when we're sort of getting there. So we're getting to the end of the um, of the thin, scaggly stuff. Uh, so let's finish that off in another five minutes. All right, one big pile sawn up. And if you were watching yesterday, that's all gone. Split a load of the oak earlier, and now I'm going to um, split that with an axe. So I'll get Sandra to fill me with my big chopper. I'm going to get my chopper out and tackle me wood. Might need a dry pair of gloves. What? Might need a dry pair of gloves. I'm taking my gloves off now. Too wet. And then all this lot here um, is going to need to go into the log store. So once Sandra's sorted the gloves out, I'll start splitting, and she can start. She can start moving. And all being well, as I say, I've already mentioned before, but I'm hoping this empty bit here is going to be fairly full by close of play today. That's my uh, that's my goal. This is my goal, the end of my life. This is the feeling they warned me about. Oh my God, what have I done <laughs> this time? So just filling the barrows up. Um, do you want me to pull that out and pull these logs out so you can get a bit closer, Sandra? It might be a bit easier. The idea was just... Well, if you can move these, that would be helpful. Yeah, that's what I say. Just give me a minute. Alright, so Sandra's in a little key, little den, that, Sandra. It's alright, it is. Okay. On that side there, when I was a boy, I got a photograph of them about three years old in the Blackberry bushes building a den. Literally, right, right there, Sandra. Lovely. Marvellous. Right, while Sandra's doing that, I'm going to get my chopper back out and carry on splitting this oak. All right, so that's all that oak that I got yesterday, cut and split. I've got two trunks there. Uh, I'm going to saw when Sandra comes out. Um, so I've used as chopping places bits for in the past. Uh, and basically, that there's a load of barrow. Well, we're here now. Is that the fifth barrow load? I think. My third. That's four. Third. Um, as you can see, it's slow and steady progress. It's a bit, bit of a knack to, yeah, build it up so it just fall down. All right, so that's that store full, which I said we would get to. And then we're just now finishing off. I've got another little bit here. Um, just come forward a bit, didn't we? And I've just got the remainder. Those bits now just cut, they're a bit too long for the uh, for the burner. So another 
few minutes and get the uh, get the chainsaw back out. Uh, so you won't be able to tell, but this one here, what I said, I'd get full. That is full. So I've got all the lightweight stuff at the back. A lot of this oak now at the front, and then you oh, can't see underneath here. I'm gonna squeeze through, um, and then underneath the builder's bag here. There's um, a, a load more wood. So basically, um, you've got all the new rules and regulations and laws about what you're allowed to burn and not allowed to burn. And that will ideally be ready for next winter. Um, what's, what, what year? We're in 2023 and then winter 2024. Then what I need to try and do before I go back, um, back to the campsite somehow, this is all going to be emptied and somehow i need to get some logs and get that also um sawed up and split for 2024 stroke 2025 um oh hang on yeah sandy we've got some news about the vicar as well haven't we what did the vicar say he was very retired school teacher about it and said we can't have them so the vicar says we can't have the wood but the, the men that were taking down the tree turned around to me yesterday and said, take as much as you possibly can, you're helping us. So obviously without the aid of a chainsaw yesterday, I was a bit limited. It's snowing or sleeting, isn't it? Right, Sorry. what are you doing here now? You're, you're doing a bit of gardening. You, you Sorry, what? to get rid of the brambles, so get rid of the brambles. The brambles, you didn't get rid of the brambles yesterday and the flipping olly tree that I'd grown over, that, that's been cut down. Anyway, we're having a picnic now, aren't we? Um. Well, we're... Drinking coffee in the snow, I wouldn't exactly call it a picnic. Yeah, drinking coffee in the snow. So I'm going to scoot up the um, sawdust that we'd created, put that into what we call our green bin. So I don't know if you have green bins where you live, but basically that can go. Oh, by the way, this is a funny story. Have you heard the latest? About. So where you live, if you live in England or, or Britain and you um, you got the council with your bins. Every week there's a saga about bins being emptied or not emptied. Every, it doesn't matter where you live, there's a bin saga, isn't there? So last week, this is the best, this is the best one ever. Our green bin, this one here, we're allowed to put garden waste in and we're also allowed to put food waste in. So we have like compostable bags. And last week they wouldn't empty the green bins. So bear in mind they've been empty the green bins for years and years and years. But do you know why they wouldn't empty them last week? Have you I heard this? I haven't heard this one. Because the food in the bins would have been frozen. Huh? Yeah. The so food... it's okay for it to be decaying, moulding full of maggots, but not frozen? Yeah, so they won't empty them in summer when it's fully decaying and full of maggots, because there's always a bin issue. But the, um, the bins didn't get emptied last week, because they said the, the food would be frozen. I'm so confused. So am I. So that's local authorities for you. And as I say, once upon a time in a previous life, I used to be a counsellor and dealing with things and bins have always been an issue. Just while you, have you noticed? I'm going to you got to talk to your back of your head. No, you need to point the camera up on the roof. All right, yeah, I see that. So we've got little Ford bits from where we need to re reassess our insulation situation up there. So the beams, it's where the uh, main cross member beams are going over in the roof. Possibly. So yeah, it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's where the wood, the wood beams is. And you've got over the bathroom is a hot room. So we've got the holes in it, haven't we? Where we put the lighting things when we have, when I when I have a, the luxury of a bathroom. It's a great picture of the back of your head, Sandra. I'm still looking at the roof. <laughs> Ruth, Ruth. Why not? Ruth, 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 the red nosed wind here. <laughs> Going to the pub tonight. I thought you said it was an England match or something. Oh, there is, yeah, it'd be chaos, won't it? Right, who's cooking tea? Everybody says, Does Sandra ever cook? I said she's not cooked a meal since I've been right. back. For everyone listening, I love to cook. It's just I like a very different style of cooking, which Neil is very grumpy about and doesn't appreciate. So, yeah. So, having turkey for tea tonight. Yeah. No, I don't eat turkey. You do? No, I don't. Well, you will because I got this one. It was one of them short dated things. We need to get some potatoes. Mm. Right, let me get my coffee before it goes cold.
And so the turkey I've got, Sandra, you remember? Oh, you've got, you got a flea on your eye there, what are you doing? Uh, the turkey for tea isn't turkey, it's chicken. I'm relieved about that. Uh, anyway, so it's the chicken. Just so got. viewers understand, the only reason I don't really eat turkeys because I used to work at a veterinary lab that supported Bernard Matthews turkeys. Oh. And when you've seen the back end of the operations, it's not pretty. So it sort of put me off for life. That's why. Beautiful Bernard Matthew. Well, he's dead, I think. No, he's not. He's, he's still in the, in the health and safety uh, bulletin thing. He was there again, like people getting injured and getting drawing injuries. And no, the man, Bernard himself, he died. I'm Are you sure? sure. I'm pretty sure he's dead. I thought he was still alive. I'll have a Google in a minute. Oh, anyway, right. yeah. Right, so anyway, so I've got, so, a, I've got a chicken crown with a load of seasoning and all the rest of it in the oven. We're doing baked potatoes with skin on today, so it's a bit like a... What's the difference between a baked potato and a roast potato? So we're doing a roast... Well, roast roast of, potatoes roasted in fat, and baked potatoes just baked without fat, isn't it, really? I don't really know. Anyway, so we're doing... Anyway, we're doing roast, roast, roast potatoes, a bit of fat on, a bit of salt and pepper. Looking good. Mm -hmm. Got some good. On, onion and mushroom gravy there ready to boil up. Mm -hmm. I've got some broccoli, cauliflower and carrots. And Thank how are your you. bowls? Your fat bowls. Oh. Yeah, so this is Sandra's handy tip. So you know when you go to the, like, what's the pet shop and things? Oh, hold your bowl up. And, and then they you, sell these coconut shells. Yeah, the with, the with there. Yeah. Coconut shells with, with, with bird food in. And they're always really expensive. So I realise, I don't know why, but the fat bowls are a lot cheaper than whatever you get in coconut the shells. Silly the suet stuff but you can just like microwave a couple of suet balls squash it into your coconut shell and you can just keep reusing the same coconut shell so that's my handy tip for the winter for bird feeders well, in fact we, I, what i might record that as a separate video sandra's wildlife tip and put it on my own channel we'll do, we're going to i'll record that and you can have that as a separate video oh thank you oh, oh that's okay you're more than welcome and okay, um so, yeah but it, yeah it just because then you can reuse the coconut shell which is like more environmentally friendly, isn't it, than just using it once and throwing it away. And it's cheaper as well. What's happening? Where, where's all them sweeties come from? Because there's no oh, palm of, went wrong. There's no palm of violets left. Somebody's no. had all the palm of violets. No, it's tragic. Like, the, I was working that night, so I knew I wouldn't be here on Halloween. You, you were working that night? Yeah, that's something on. So I knew I wouldn't be at home in time anyway for all the children coming around. So I thought, well, I know, I'll, I'll put a bowl of sweets outside the house and then if the children want, they can come and take some sweets. And do you know what happened? What happened? It absolutely leathered it down with rain and there were just no kids out at all. Cause, and all I came back to was a bowl of rained on sweets. What are we going to do with them? I don't know. Are you gonna try I don't mind drumsticks, actually. Mm. So, but, yeah, but, but any suggestions? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It, it, for, for probably another 10 years, we will not have children knocking on our doorstep because I, I've scared. I have had children at Halloween, and, and Sandra can back me up here. I used to dress up as a gorilla and used to get these little cute little, little kiddies used to come holding their little Swedes and pumpkins and all the rest of it, and they'd knock on the door and go, trick or treat! And I'd open the door and growl at them. Rah! And I've actually had, uh, do, do, do I lie, children no. reduced to tears, <laughs> running down the road screaming, and then parents knocking on the door and going, can you stop scaring our children? <laughs> I wasn't aware of the last bit. Yeah, yeah. Just literally, I, I actually had children quaking and absolutely bursting into tears. I don't know why you're so proud of yourself. Well, it's Halloween, isn't it? It's my, it's our castle when, when we open the door or So, at least I'm not answering the door dressed up as an elf. <laughs> I, just, I was a gorilla. And today I was out there with my chopper in my hand in the back garden. Good job nobody came knocking on the door today and sort of greeting them, holding an axe, isn't it? But it's, it's snow, oh, it's pouring with snow at the moment. Yeah, it's like, it's trying to explain people like Neil and his flipping chainsaws. He's got about four. It's just like weird how many chainsaws you've got. I've got a two-stroke one, and the other, the other ones are electric. So you need one in use, a secondary one, and the backup one, and then a petrol one. But the petrol one is I'm not, it's not too good, if I'm honest. But anyway, I'm impressed. That one that replaced the chain on while you were away, that did cut really well, didn't it? So all this, I've, I've sharpened your yeah. chain. No, I need, like we've been through this conversation before, you need to get the angles right. So. I hope you've not thrown that away because it's got the instructions like 
which angle, but to set all the angles right on the chain sharpener, I need a workmate, and Neil's last work workmate fell into little bits. So uh, uh, somebody's uh, getting a not that much surprise Christmas. Well, don't present. tell people what, what I'm getting for Christmas because you're going to ruin it. Sorry. But anyway, so you keep saying I, I've not sharp, but that's why, because you need to set the angles right, and I can't without a workmate. So Santa's been buying chains, and I've got spare chains. I've well, got... You didn't tell me that. Well, you didn't ask. You just... Well, I can change the other spare chain while I get around to sharpening yeah, the other leave, two if you want. Leave, 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 leave my chain. Oh. So it's all down to the angle Set of the dangle. It it's all down to the angle, the angle of the dangle. Of the angle of the grind in this case. Not the angle of the pocket. <laughs> angle of the grind, not angle of the dangle. What's funny crude, about that? Apart from it being whatever. But all of these sharpening jobs, it's all in the angle. Yeah, I'll that. It is. Well done. You get, get the right angle, get a nice burr on the opposite side, smooth off the other burr, then you've got a nice sharp edge. Because, Sandra, if there wasn't an angle on, on a blade, it would be blunt. That's not really... But it's not just any old angle. It's got to be the correct angle. This is, this is the thing. Right, okay, okay. Right, we can carry on. Hello, Rashi, what are you doing? Mm. Right, I'm, going to, I'm cooking tea. Sandra's fat-balling. She wants to be filming, so. right, I think we're going to finish this video off here. So, uh, chop, chop, chopping day went quite smooth actually, didn't it? Yeah, look, still got all my fingers and everything. Yeah, no problem at all. It's, um, health and safety there with the chainsaw out and all the rest of it. I'm sure somebody will make some comment, but hey ho, that's the way the mop flops. And we have got definitely um, snow coming down at the moment it's very light snow yeah. but if um you know it's getting dark if we do have a proper 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 bit of snow we might take you out with us later um to somewhere if it snows i'll shut up all will become clear if it snows because we, we there's one particular bit i like to video when it snows and it's really sweet and quite quite amusing isn't it i guess so if you've not seen it before if you've not seen it before no 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 and um, so now we're completely ahead of ourselves. Tomorrow, Sunday, we're going to wrap up the presents, sort out the presents. I'm going to take Sandra up into my attic for the last time. I'm going to fix my lights onto the uh, up, up, up in the attic and pull down the posters. That should only take an hour. And then next weekend, you've got all to yourself. I don't need you anymore. I am in church in the morning, just to forewarn you. In morning? In morning? Teas and coffees. I mean, you're not going to be out till two o'clock. That's going to be half the day gone. So you can have a good complaint now. Sandra says, I'm going to church in the morning. She'll be back at two o'clock in the afternoon. And then she'll come back and say, I'm hungry. And then I'll need some dinner and it's going to be four o'clock. Right, I'll, I'll get on with things on my own. Leave it to me. You need to have a word with the vicar, the father. <laughs> you could get up a bit earlier. That would also work. What for? Get I've... things done. But you, you're going to church in the morning. Not till 11. Oh, Sunday, you have a lie on a Sunday. <laughs> See what I have to put up with. <laughs> like, it's the one thing I've said, I really need to do this this month. And he's like having a moan already. It's like the only thing. I've missed yoga, I think, three times now to help me get on with stuff. Do I get even a thank you? So, anybody who's been watching the videos will remember was it three mm -hmm. weekends ago, two weekends ago? Sandra appeared at two o'clock on a Sunday afternoon to help me finish off the loft. So you were at church doing teas and coffees the other week, Sandra, and every, everybody will remember you. That was me. a month ago. I do it once it a wasn't month. A month ago. It was a month ago. I do it once a month. How long have you been back a month? God damn it. You'll miss me. Well, you'll miss me. When I'm, when I'm not here, you'll miss me. He's the one complaining, not me. <laughs> I'm not complaining. Things to do. We're running out of time. Right, let's wrap this video off. I'm going to be putting the uh, dinner out in two minutes. Going to have a nice, a nice, nice dinner and um, get a bit cosy. Have an hour of feet up, and if it gets um, if it gets a bit snowy outside, we'll get out and do some filming. Okay, guys, look after yourselves as ever. And um, Sandra, can, can you point to that person there? Look at them. Can you come point to them. They're them. They're them. What them? Them. them. Her. Them? Yeah, them. them. Or them. Yeah, they're watching you. <laughs> anyway, have a good evening.
and we'll see you all soon. I've good afternoon because this will be going up without. Sorry, I've, oh. so, I've started to put my videos sorry, up differently. Afternoon. Sorry, I have this um, something called uh, Tube Buddy, which tells me when to put videos up the best time for watchers. So it's always been said about 5.30. It's now gone to, apparently, more of you are logged on at 5 o'clock than 5.30, apart from on a, I think it's a Tuesday and a Friday, which is 6 o'clock. Anyway, doesn't really matter. Look after yourselves, guys. And, um, yep, yeah, I'll see you also on the next one. And um, take it easy. Bye.